last time. One, two, three. Good morning. Is this thing working? Good morning. If we could find our seats, that'd be great. We can begin the worship uh, this morning. I'd like to, uh, it's good for us to be here this morning. And if you're viewing us and participating live stream, we offer you a warm welcome. Last week was special because we have celebrated Ash Wednesday. And probably people remember Ash Wednesday, at least from when they were growing up. And uh, kids at school would have a, a black cross, Ash cross, on their forehead. But we realize that it's a lot more than that. It's the idea of repentance. Uh, Ash Wednesday is the beginning of Lent and a call for repentance and a call for further trust in God. And so with trust in God this morning, let us now stand as we are able and worship the Lord together.
Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you, Lord, that we are able to praise you this morning. Thank you for your gift of salvation. Thank you that through the grace of the Holy Spirit, we are able, with your spirit, to have our lives transformed. Let us know deep down that you have transformed the world. And we ask these and all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Nice to be back from Florida. What a lie. <laughs> no, no, it's good to be back. Hey, before I uh, start the talk today, I think we all are grieving what's happening in Ukraine. All the people, a million four people, a million four hundred thousand people have, have had to leave the country already. And if you're like me, you think, well, you feel kind of helpless. What can we do? Well, be, I should pray, no question. Prayer is powerful. But what I'd like to do this week, um, today, all through the week, and next Sunday, if you would like to make an offering, I'm going to put money together and send it to Convoy of Hope. Convoy of Hope is a Christian faith-based humanitarian organization that operates both here in the United States and around the world. They are presently in Poland, on the ground, ministering to the hundreds of thousands of refugees pouring over the border. It's a, they're, they're a four-star charity. They're one of the best. I checked them out many years ago. They were both here in Lake County at one time. They actually inspired a lot of what we do today at McKinley. We did some things here on the property. That was inspired by Convoy of Hope. So if you would like to put cash in the Little Church of the Poor this week or next week, or write out a check to Body of Christ on the memo line, write HOPE. So I know that check is for the Convoy of Hope. So you can do it today, you can do it next Sunday, do it during the week. So by next week, the beginning of the following week, I'll put all that together and we'll get it to the Convoy of Hope. I can assure you that uh, that money will go to where it's intended. They're a fantastic charity. Nine, 90 cents out of every dollar goes right to the people they're helping. 10% is used for administrative costs and for uh, promotion. And that's really a good rate. A lot of these charities are 20 or 30%. So you can be sure that most of all that you send in will go to help people. So I think that's the least we can do. And again, pray, because prayer is powerful. It's kind of a lead in to what I want to talk about today, um, because we're beginning a new Lenten series for these six weeks of Lent, simply entitled, God Will Help You. Each Sunday, we're going to look at how the Lord helps us with such things as anxiety, fear, loneliness, sickness, grief, and forgiveness. Because Lent is always a season that we're called to grow closer to God, we thought it might be interesting and useful for us during this Lent to see how Jesus draws closer to us when we face the very various challenges in our daily lives. <clears throat> So today I'm going to focus on anxiety. It is estimated that any given year, nearly 50 million Americans will feel the effects of panic attacks, phobias, and other anxiety disorders. <clears throat> 50 million. In fact, anxiety disorders in our country are the number one mental health problem for women and are second only to alcohol and drug abuse among men. Some medical studies have indicated that people from each generation in the 20th century were three times more likely to experience depression and anxiety than people of the preceding generation. And that trend has not subsided over the first 20 years of our 21st century. We might ask how this can be, since when you look at our lifestyle in America, our transportation choices are safer than ever, our food and water are generally plentiful and generally safe. Our energy options are many. And most Americans live in relatively peaceful communities. And yet, we are a tense society. Why? Well, change for one thing. Researchers speculate that our society's environment and social order have changed more 
in the last 30 to 40 years than they did in the previous 300 years. Technology, the all-pervasive influence and presence of the Internet, increased warnings about global warming, the threat of terrorism, and now a devastating war, the list goes on and on as to why living in this times now, these times now, we can feel a growing sense of angst and anxiety. And then you add the onslaught of personal challenges. More than likely, you or someone you know is facing financial hardship, perhaps fighting cancer, slugging through a divorce, perhaps battling addiction, or some other major crisis. Now, we need to know that anxiety is not a sin. It's an emotion. So we should not be anxious about feeling anxious. <laughs> anxiety, however, can lead to wrongful behavior. When we numb our fears and anxiety with six packs or food binges, when we spew out anger or pedal our fears to anyone who will listen, we are on the wrong track. If an anxiety leads a person to neglect or abandon one's spouse, to neglect one's children, to break agreements or break hearts, then unmitigated anxiety and fear become sinful. In Luke's Gospel, that's why Jesus says, be careful or your hearts will be weighed down by the anxieties of life. So here are some signs that your life is beginning to be weighed down with too much anxiety. Are you laughing less than you once did? Do you tend to see the glass half empty rather than half full? Would those who know you best describe you as increasingly negative and critical? Do you assume that something bad is always going to happen? Do you dilute and downplay good news with your version of reality? Are there many days when you'd rather stay in bed than get up? Do you tend to magnify the negative and dismiss the positive? And here's the kicker. Given the chance, would you avoid any interaction with humanity for the rest of your life? <laughs> well, if you answered yes, to most of these, or perhaps even a few of them, I have a scripture today that we need to burn into our hearts and our mind. It's from Paul's letter to the, to the Philippians in the New Testament, and it goes like this. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all people. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, Meditate on those things. Now, what we have in this passage are four directives that lead to one wonderful promise. Let's break it down. First of all, we need to celebrate God's goodness. Rejoice in the Lord always. This is not about ignoring one's real circumstances or trying to sugarcoat them, but rather taking the focus off oneself and putting the focus on who God is and what he has done in our lives. And celebrating his goodness, his faithfulness, and forgiveness. These characteristics of the Lord remain true no matter what, is going, what we're going through. So the first thing to do is to put the focus, rather than on the anxiety, put the focus on the Lord. Secondly, ask God for help. Let your request be known to God. The Lord is at hand, as the scripture says. Because of his nearness, we can always ask the Lord for what we need. His presence makes way for our prayers. Thirdly, in this scripture, leave your concerns with God. He says, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. 
We shouldn't ignore our concerns. We shouldn't pretend that they're not there. But we should be willing to state them, be honest about them, and leave them in the hands of the Father. And fourthly, meditate on good things. Think about the things that are good and worthy of praise. Our minds are powerful. They can either be fixated on fear or fixated on what is good. Which one do you think will ease our anxiety? For Paul, 2,000 years ago, was tapping into what doctors and therapists today know that we transform our minds with conscious meditation on the good. So here's the formula to help us deal with anxiety and fear. Celebrate, ask, leave, meditate. In other words, calm. Stay calm. Celebrate, ask, leave, meditate. There may be other things that you and I have to do in order to handle anxiety. Perhaps if it's excessive, we may need some therapy. We may need some medication. But staying calm, C-L-A-L-M, is something you and I can start doing right now. But something, you know, the Word of God gives us a, a direction when we're dealing with anxiety and fear. <laughs> One thing I know for sure, it is not the will of God that you and I should wake up every day and live a life of perpetual anxiety. That is not God's will for us. It is not his will that we face every day with dread and fear that we hesitate to get up because we, we feel so dreadful and so fearful. He made us for a life not dominated by mind-splitting angst and worry. It's very clear in God's word, in this scripture today especially, we are to be calm. I'd like to conclude with these words of Jesus and a prayer. And Jesus said this to us. I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And so would you pray in your heart with me as we think about anxiety in our life, especially this morning, whatever may be disrupting your life right now, to remember to be calm to celebrate God's presence, to ask him to leave what's struggling with him, and to meditate on all that is good. Father God, I confess to you that I often feel anxious about things I can't control. Sometimes I doubt your strength, and I wonder if you really care. I know what your word says. I can be anxious for nothing, I give all of my concerns to you, but I need your help to do that. Help me to surrender. Help me to believe. Help me to know that you are good despite my circumstances. Strengthen my faith even when I'm anxious. And allow this struggle to deepen our relationship. I thank you for your faithfulness. Remind me of the moments you've been faithful to me in the past so I can cling to them as I walk through difficult seasons of anxiety. In Jesus' name I pray. is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand, when everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful through
stand as you are able and let us pray our table prayer together. Lord, you have formed us and you know us. You know our coming in and our going out. You know when we sit and when we stand. You know our hearts and our thoughts are always before you. You know all our sins and failures. Nothing is hidden from you, yet you do not abandon us. Instead, you patiently teach us, lead us, and bring us back to you. Indeed, from the beginning, from before we were conceived, you knew each of us and kept us in your heart. You loved each of us and declared that we were yours. Praise be to you, great God of all the living. Our hearts rejoice and our spirits are glad because of your great goodness to us. We welcome you and give you thanks, you who are before us and behind us, above us and within us, you who are truth and wisdom and compassion. 
we especially rejoice at the wonder of Jesus, your beloved one, born poor and weak like us, knowing hunger and cold like us, feeling weary and hurt like us, fully human like us in all things but sin. We remember how on the night before he died, Jesus called his friends for a final meal. We remember how he took bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body broken for you. Remember how he took wine, blessed it, gave it to his disciples saying, this is my blood shed for you and for all people. Do this in memory of me. One last time he spoke his heart, poured out his truth, gave all of himself to us and for us. The mystery of his life and death and his rising to new life with you, great God, as Lord of all. Jesus is your pledge, your gift, your life, given to each of us through the mystery of the breaking of the bread. Send your spirit, Lord, upon our church and all peoples, upon our families and our friends. Teach all of us to value the good and teach us to do what is right. Send your spirit, Lord, upon all who are suffering and all in special need, upon our loved ones and all who have died. Bring us all together in your one community of faith and love. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in the ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Jesus invites each one of us to lay our burdens before him, and to receive his holy presence.
As we begin our Lenten journey, we bring our needs and the needs of the world before our Heavenly Father. And please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church community, that the Spirit may lead us to deeper conversion and greater obedience to God's word, we pray to the Lord. For an end to the war and suffering in Ukraine, that the tender mercy of God will guide all to the way of peace, we pray to the Lord. For those who hunger each day, that the certainty of God's love and the embrace of our faith community may give them hope, we pray to the Lord. We pray for Randy Farrell, Bob Jankowski, Betty and Bob Stagura, Mike Weber, Mary Ellen Strong, Connie Rosito, Joanne Ulepic, Pam Land, Austin and Becky Jackson, Paul and Jamie Harnikar, Carol Matetic, the family of Mary Jane Kane, and the family of Sylvia Totorella, Kathleen Bonney, Brookshire. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Finally, let us pray for any special intentions in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord Loving Father, our source of strength in every temptation, hear our prayers. Granted in all our needs, we may confess Jesus as the only Lord who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We want to get, give a little bit of time for any celebrations that anybody uh, brought this morning. Any special events or happenings where you see God especially involved. Just like Master, Pike's, Master Mike said about uh, ask God for help, you know, and I did that uh, 43 years ago. I asked God to come into my life and help me, and this week I celebrated 43 years of surprise. Congratulations. Congratulations. Today is Cheryl's birthday. Happy birthday, Cheryl. Happy birthday. Darlene beat me to the punch there on that. Happy birthday. Hey, Carol. Uh, my daughter's birthday's tomorrow. Happy birthday. <laughs> I'd just like to praise God and thank you all in this community for all the prayers for the last four years. Our son is finally in total remission. Thank you. My daughter Colleen's uh, 40th birthday is Tuesday. I don't know how she got to be 40. Uh, I had an MRI and everything came out uh, normal. Um, Julie had a birthday past Thursday, and also my niece in Florida had a birthday Thursday. And Connie. And Connie, yes. Anybody else? Connie had a birthday. I got a chance to visit her. She said thank you to everyone who sent cards and prayers, and she looks wonderful. That's great. Happy birthday, Connie. Okay. I, I wasn't scheduled to work at the House of Prayer on Friday morning, but um, I uh, went in to substitute for somebody, and I wasn't planning. I was planning on you know doing things on Friday morning at, at home, and, and uh, when I was there for the few hours, a lady came in for prayer that uh, needed uh, uh, a prayer for her, uh, alcoholism for her husband, you know, and she. Uh, so I was glad. To, I think it was God directed because I wasn't planning on going in that morning, you know. So I praise praise God for that. We 
we celebrated Shelly's birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, Shelly. God bless you. Anybody else? This is not a celebration, but prayers for my sister-in-law, Sherry, whose test for kidney disease came out poorly, and she's freaking out. So she's having another test at the end of the week. Please pray for her. I want to just add one prayer Thanksgiving right here. This is Kay Weber, her husband, Mike, not here, but we've been praying for Mike for a long time and he's been on death's door a few times with cancer, but the guy's amazed. He's got a fantastic wife and God's grace is good. They are going to Florida on Wednesday. I just wanted to add, uh, in my phone call to you this week, uh, I really meant it when I said that this award that I'm getting as Citizen of the Year is not just about me, it truly is about all of us. Uh, our involvement in the community, the Kinley, House of Prayer, all the ways that you help in the area, the support you've given to various ministry. I happen to be the face, but you are the body. And uh, so, when I get that award, it, it's, it's really for all of us. And if you'd like to come to that, you're more than welcome. There's a sign-up sheet out in the gathering area. Uh, it's uh, three weeks from tomorrow. Uh, you're welcome to come, and uh, we'll do it together, okay? There's one announcement this morning as well. The um, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality uh, course starts this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m., uh, right in the gathering space. Please stand as you're able, and we'll pray our blessing together. May the Spirit of the Lord be always upon us. May the blessings of the Lord always surround us. And may our hearts know his abiding peace. May our God, who is our light and life, bless us always. Everybody.